Hello, my name is Peter Rice, Adobe Connect Product Evangelist. I'd like to give you a quick demonstration of what the Adobe Connect mobile application looks like running on an iPhone. The experience is going to be the same if you use an Android phone, but I'll use an iPhone today just for the demonstration. What you're seeing on screen is two different screens being shared. On the left-hand side is my desktop. On the desktop, I have my Adobe Connect meeting running, and you can see that I can switch between different layouts and go from my slides with chat and a list of attendees to various other activities using the layouts on the right-hand side. But I'm going to start off in my lobby where I have a nice wallpaper background that will be used throughout the entire meeting. On the right-hand screen, you can see I've got my, uh, iPhone or my iPhone being displayed. I'm using a, uh, a cable to actually allow me to show you exactly what's going on, on my screen on my computer, and I'm, sh I'm sharing that in the Adobe Connect meeting that I'm recording right now. So let me just go back in, and I'll start by launching the Adobe Connect application that I've already installed from the iTunes Store. You can see I've already joined this meeting in the past, and it remembers the last URL I was at. In fact, it remembers a number of my previous URLs. Or I could just as easily join the meeting by clicking on a link that was delivered in an email, perhaps in a calendar, or even from an instant message. So I'm just going to click on that. Um, it also remembers that I logged in the last time using a pseudonym, Conrad Sims, and I'll continue to use that now. So I'm going to say Enter. You can see immediately over on the desktop that Conrad Sims has been asked or has asked to enter the meeting, and I'll click OK. And now Conrad has joined the meeting in exactly the same way as somebody would from their desktop, except this is the experience on the iPhone. If you see the uh, fact that the wallpaper is there, and there's also some user interface. On the left-hand side, there are some blocks that shows you that I'm seeing a meeting overview. And on the right is a little man with his hand raised, or a little person. Uh, and I can use that to get the attention of the presenters or of the host of the meeting uh, to agree or disagree, perhaps, with a question they pose to the audience. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to sit and be a passive uh, watcher. I could use the little menu in the bottom corner to log out if I wanted to. But again, for now, I'm just going to watch the meeting. Um, on the right, I'm, or on the left, I'm going to be uh, on my desktop, and I'm going to switch from the lobby to my presentation. You can see that uh, there are three pods, as we call them, or three little windows with functionality. Uh, and now I have some extra icons on the left-hand side of my iPhone display. Each one of those represents the different activities that are taking place in the screen. So, for example, in the upper left corner, there's a chat. And if I tap right on the chat, I'll see that the chat window expands so that I can get more detail. I can perhaps scroll through the various chats that, are, uh, that have been here before. And maybe I want to participate in this chat, and I can do that either by just clicking on that and typing, or uh, since I'm on a mobile phone and I've got the ability to do voice recognition, I think I'll use that. I'm going to click the microphone icon. Will this meeting be recorded? Can you send that out at the end of the meeting, please? Question mark. And that's all it takes. I hit done and hit done again, and my chat has been entered. So it's very easy for me to participate in chat. In fact, it's uh, faster for me to talk than it is to type. Um, I'm going to go back to click on that uh, icon in the upper left, and that brings me back to that overview screen. And you can see my chat is being uh, seen by everybody, both on the desktop and on the mobile clients. Um, I can also see the list of people in the room. And if I tap on that, I can see that there's myself, uh, uh, Conrad, Peter is running the meeting, and Kelly is also joined from a mobile client. Um, in fact, that's uh, an Android phone that's joined. Um, and I can switch between these different things with these icons. Now I'm going to go back to that top one, that overview, and uh, I can see that the, the main uh, meeting window is really the PowerPoint slides that are there, and that's represented by that bullseye. I can, again, either tap on the bullseye or tap directly on the slides themselves to have that go full screen so I get a better view. Um, I'm going to switch over and on the desktop. I'm going to start presenting. I'm going to go through these slides, and you'll see that perhaps the uh, text on this slide makes it a little hard to read. So on my mobile client, I simply double tap, and that zooms me right in. And now I can pan around to various parts, and uh, it gives me a really nice view of what that is. In fact, I can go further by pinching in, and uh, I can zoom really far in if I want. You can see I get this really nice high-resolution display. Very easy for me to read this content now. If I want to pan back and forth through that, I can do that very easily. Or I double tap, and it takes me back to that full-scale view. And if I tap again on that upper corner, I get uh, the whole overview of the meeting going. Um, another nice thing is that if you've taken the time to put PowerPoint animations in to allow you to have builds and wipes and fades and all those fun things that make slides more interesting, 
uh, you actually get to see those even on your mobile client. So as I click to start those animations, you'll see they're playing just as smoothly on my mobile client, on my iPhone, as they are on my desktop. So really a great experience for me as a participant watching this content. Again, I can simply tap on that to make it full screen. The other thing I might want to do is uh, to perhaps screen share. So over on my desktop, perhaps I'm going to go here and uh, I'm going to say I want to share my screen. Uh, I'm going to pick my second monitor and say share and perhaps I'll just open up a, a new browser window and from here perhaps uh, click over to the Adobe Connect page and you're seeing that I'm getting the same experience on my mobile client as I am on my desktop. Again, I can uh, have that a little bit clearer. Maybe I want to go to the apps page uh, and look at the various uh, apps that can be added to my Adobe Connect meeting uh, or I can learn more about the Adobe Connect uh, uh, mobile client. But uh, again, you're seeing the exact same content being played on my mobile client. In fact, I can do the same things. If I want to zoom in, I can simply pinch in and zoom right in and pan around this page that's being shared through screen sharing or double tap and go right back out. So I'm, I'm finished with my screen sharing for the moment. I'm going to uh, now stop sharing that and switch back over here because I want to show some other rich content. I'm going to switch over to a layout that has video in it. And in this case, I'm going to go over and rewind this, this video a little bit and pause that. So you can see that I'm seeing the video both on my desktop and on my mobile client. When I hit play, it will start to play that video for both. And you can see the progress bar uh, moving across on both of these things. I'm going to pause that because one of the things I, I want to do and want to be able to do is to actually do things like markup. So I can turn on my whiteboarding tools and you can see I've got some... Uh, some previous whiteboards that have been done at Adobe Connect meetings are completely persistent. They remembered what I did the last time I was in this room. But I can easily go and say, I'm going to uh, use a different color perhaps. I'm going to go and pick a, a green color. And I want to highlight some things that are on screen. Perhaps I want to point some things out for people that uh, they may not have seen. And I can do this directly on my video. And as you can see, it's showing up on the mobile client just as well as it's uh, showing up on my desktop. So really powerful ability to do things like whiteboard on content and be, have that seen by everybody. I'll turn that off. I'm going to go to uh, another capability, and that is if I switch over here, um, you can see there's uh, a couple of additional types of, of content that have shown up in the meeting room. One of them in the upper right corner is a poll. I'm going to tap on that poll, and you'll see that I see the full, uh, the full question and the potential answers, and I can go and I'm going to say, yes, this is... Uh, this has been useful and you can see my vote has been added to that. I can see the results change and now I can switch back. The other thing that I can see here are some notes in the bottom right hand corner. And these are uh, highly formatted notes. I can see there's uh, color, there's uh, italics, there's underlining, bullets, and all of those things are here and I can actually scroll easily through this content even on my mobile client to get a a really good view of those notes that were prepared. And if uh, somebody wants to go and perhaps make a change, so over on the desktop, if I uh, take that word students and I instead make it uh, green, you can see that changes instantly for me over on the mobile client too. So really a, a wonderful uh, experience in that mirroring exactly what I get on the desktop. Um, I'm going to go one step further because uh, I'm going to um, actually ask Conrad Sims to turn his camera on. I can do that simply by rolling over his name and saying enable video. And when I do that, uh, the little pod in the, in the bottom corner uh, or in the uh, sorry upper left corner is there. I'm going to start my web camera over here. And I'm here in my office where the sun is sort of streaming in and, and causing these dots here. Uh, but I'm here in my office and you can see that as I show up, uh, the uh, video is being shared uh, both in the desktop and on the mobile client. I'm going to stop that for a second because I'm going to uh, also do that from my mobile client. You can see on the right hand side of the mobile client, because I enabled video, uh, I have this little icon here and I can click this um, and I'm going to say broadcast. And so now I'm broadcasting my camera <laughs> directly from my mobile client um, into the meeting. And I can click on that again and perhaps uh, I'm going to turn that around. Um, if, I, if I tap on that icon, I can click on a little icon on the screen and that allows me to uh, perhaps move my camera around and, and point the, the rear camera uh, at something else on my uh, computer. So I'm just going to stop that. Um, but hopefully that gives you an idea that uh, it's very easy for me to, uh, to share my camera either from my desktop with people on mobile or from my mobile client to the people on the desktop. Uh, let's go one step further because there, there is something I can see here that um, there's a PowerPoint deck that is uh, in this meeting room. 
And I actually want to allow Conrad to run this uh, meeting, to actually be the presenter and, and handle things. So I'm going to roll over Conrad's name and um, pick him up and drag him into the host center. I could just easily roll over and say, make host. But Conrad, on his or on the iPhone here, is actually a full host of the meeting now. And that's uh, given a few extra capabilities. Like if I wanted to, I could go and um, change other people's rights. I could uh, make somebody a host or a presenter so I could promote or demote people now that I have host rights. Um, I can also go and do a few other things. So in this case, I'm going to tap on those slides. And you can see I have an arrow that allows me to click and navigate through these slides for everybody. So even though I'm on a mobile phone and I'm going through things like animation, I'm actually controlling the experience simply by clicking on that little arrow. And that allows me, again, to present the material in the meeting room, even from my iPhone here, from my mobile device. Um, if I wanted to, I could even change the content that's in there. I'm going to stop sharing this and instead say start sharing and pick something else to share. Perhaps what I want to share is a picture of this Vega. So I can, again, very easily call that up from my uh, the catalog of material that's available in the room. So I could stop sharing that perhaps and say I want to start sharing something else. And you can see I can navigate back and forth through all this content. Maybe I do want to call up uh, that video that we shared before um, and be able to play that video. I'm going to hit the play button and it will play for everybody. If I hit the pause button or rewind it, I can control that for everybody. So really powerful. allows me to, to truly control the whole experience for everybody. Um, I'm going to stop sharing that and uh, go back to the overview. And in fact, I'm going to go, I'm, for the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to show, or the second last thing, I'm going to show how, as the host of the meeting, I can even control the audio experience that's taking place in this meeting room. One of the things I want to be able to do is to actually manage the meeting audio. So if I click on that, it shows that I have the option to turn on the audio bridge that's integrated with my meeting room. It allows me to set the uh, ability for people to join either with just their phone, and I'll just click on that, I may want people to join with their microphones as well, so I'll turn that on as well. And as soon as I do that, uh, you'll see that the, the meeting will automatically start the audio conference bridge for me. And I can hear that it's already done it. And it's, it's uh, putting in all the conference code material right now, and it's logging into the meeting for me. So uh, in this case, all I want to have the, the system do is to call me. So I might want to put in, oops, uh, let's go back a little bit. I know, yes, all right. Um, so let's just do this, um, five, 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 one, two, one, two. I'm going to, I'm not going to use it. <laughs> so I'll just use directory assistance here. Uh, but you can see that, uh, that's all I have to do. And I can now hit call my phone, or in this case, I may just say listen only. And this will allow me to, uh, listen to the audio conference that's taking place here. Um, and to, uh, without having to dial in, I can simply listen, but I can hear all the people who are talking on the phone or even if they're using their microphones. If I wanted to, I could use my microphone. There's a little microphone icon there. And I could say I want to connect with my microphone instead of connecting with the phone. So I really have uh, both options available to me right here on my mobile client. And the last thing I do want to show is one extra capability. And that extra capability is uh, something that we've just added most recently in our, our new mobile uh, client. Uh, and that is an integration that allows us to use something called custom pods. And custom pods are um, sort of like apps that you would install into your phone for as an app store, we can install apps into our meeting room. So I've got an app installed in my meeting room and it's the YouTube app or the YouTube extension, our custom pod. And I simply load this into my meeting room. It'll take a moment to download to my phone but it, and it'll let people know that it's initializing the player. But what this allows me to do is as the host of the meeting, I'm gonna go over here and type uh, perhaps the word landscape try and find something uh, safe on YouTube uh, is always a challenge, right? So um, I'm going to click landscape and I can see that uh, there's some relaxing landscapes. That sounds like something safe for me to play in this meeting. Uh, I'm going to, uh, and you can see I can scroll through all the different things that are here, but I'm going to uh, choose this relaxing landscapes and hit play. And when I hit play, you can see it, it'll take a moment to, uh, to catch up, but, um, and I'll pause while I wait for it, but you can see it's actually started to play the video for everybody in the meeting, even on the mobile phone. And I, I can uh, hit play some more, or perhaps I want to seek to a different part of the meeting. Uh, and you can see that the seek has, has taken place. Um, and when I click play, I get this wonderful experience of being able to see this same video playback on my iOS iPhone, uh, as well as my desktop client. So incredibly powerful, that ability. And this, uh, this YouTube pod is fantastic. It's from our partner, uh, eSync Training. 
They've done an amazing job with this. So uh, really powerful ability. So I'll just pause that. Uh, hopefully that gives you a sense of the capabilities of the Adobe Connect mobile client running on iOS. But uh, in fact, the exact same experience I've been watching here is happening on my Android phone. So uh, either one, uh, it works on iPads as well. Uh, if you get a moment, download and install the Adobe Connect uh, mobile client and uh, try and attend your next meeting from your phone or from your iPad. And I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.